and welcome back everybody. On today's show, we're going to take a look at the chain rule, but in reverse. And not the chain rule for derivatives, but how to reverse the chain rule with respect to integration. Uh, consider the following. Consider, what if I'm looking for the antiderivatives of 2x times cosine of x squared dx. And you're thinking to yourself, well, it's a product. I've got a product going on there. Uh, but we don't really have a product rule for integrals, so there's not really anything to do with that. And then you're thinking, well, well let's try something. You've got a cosine in there, and the antiderivative of cosine is going to involve sine. So what if we did sine of x squared? Well, then how would we check ourselves? Well, the derivative of sine of x squared is cosine of x squared times the derivative of x squared. Oh, my gosh! And so we would say that that is true. And then what if, what if I wanted this thing? the antiderivative of 3 times sine of x squared, uh, yes, 3 times sine of x squared times cosine x dx. And again, it's a product, and we don't really have a rule for dealing with products, but we sort of know that the antiderivative of blah -bitty blah squared involves blah -bitty blah cubed, and so I start thinking, okay, well, if that's the case, how do I check myself? The derivative of that is 3 times sine x squared, conveniently, times the derivative of the inside. Oh, my goodness sakes! So what I'd like to do in this screencast is formalize how we deal with that so that we're not just, you know, throwing darts at a board guessing but that we have a process that helps us to get at some of these more complex integrands, and we're going to call this the substitution method. Ready? One, two, three. The substitution method. Very good. The substitution method says like this. If capital F prime of x is little f of x, then the integral of f of u of x times u prime of x dx is capital F evaluated at u of x plus a constant. Um, side note, la, we do this by expressing the integral of f of u of x u prime of x dx as the integral of f of u du. And this will be where the key is. And this is why the method is usually called the method of u substitution. Because we make a strategic substitution. We pull x out and put u in. I want to go in, coach. That's great. You will go in. We're going to put you in. And when we do that, it makes our problem more doable. I'll show you what I mean uh, by taking a look at something very straightforward. Uh, let's evaluate the indefinite integral of 3x squared times the sine of x cubed dx. And again, by evaluate, we mean we're looking for all possible antiderivatives of 3x squared sine of x cubed. And our thought is, the derivative of this thing is hanging out over here. And that makes our choice very, very straightforward. What we're going to do over here in Scrapland, here, over here in Scrapland, 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 it's a great song. Uh, is we're going to say that our u is going to be x cubed. We're going to simplify the problem by letting this be u. So we'll let u be x cubed. I don't want to be x cubed. Well, it doesn't really matter. 
we also have to do something with this guy over here. So the derivative of u with respect to x is 3x squared, and so du is 3x squared times dx. And for all those people who are like, whoa, wait a second, what is that? Uh, the derivative of u with respect to x is 3x squared, right? That's what, that's what this does. The derivative of u with respect to x is 3x squared. And then we just run that guy up there, and we get du equals 3x squared dx. Okay. So what does this become? This becomes the integral of sine of u, right? Sine of x cubed is sine of u. And then all of this and all of that gets replaced by du. And you have the antiderivative of sine, well, the antiderivative of sine u du. So what is that? Well, the antiderivative of sine u is negative cosine u plus a constant. And so we sub back in, and we're done. So now there's no guesswork. There's no let's just throw a dart and hope. We have a process by which we replace a complicated expression with u because its derivative happens to be hiding somewhere in the integrand, and we can make the integration very, very straightforward. Um, for example, let's evaluate the integral of x times x squared plus 9 to the fifth dx. Now, generally speaking, things in parentheses make for great u's. And so I'm thinking over here in Scrapland that a great u would be the thing in parentheses, particularly because its derivative, I mean the derivative of x squared plus 9, its derivative is already mostly hanging out there. The only thing we're missing is a factor of 2. Oh my gosh, everybody, look out your window. There it is. We'll just throw a 2 in there, no big deal, right? Well, it's a little bit of a big deal. Uh, so what we do, we can't just throw a 2 in there. We have to compensate by multiplying by 1 half. This preserves the integrand. We haven't changed the value of anything. We've just rewritten things in a creative way. So this becomes 1 half times the integral of. Now this thing in parentheses is u to the fifth power, and all the squiggly underlined stuff is just du. And this turns out to be really straightforward because we know how to take the antiderivative of u to the fifth. Power goes up by 1, divide by the new power, plus a constant. And we substitute back u to the sixth over 6 plus a constant. And it's important to substitute back because your original problem was given in terms of x. It's a dx integral. So your answer should be in terms of x. It should be an answer where x is the variable. x was the variable of, of focus in the integrand. x is the variable of focus in your final answer. Okay? Okay. So let's see. One more. One more on this slide. We can fix it. x squared plus 2x over x cubed plus 3x squared plus 12 dx. And you're saying, what in Sam Hill? But we can do this. We can do this. What makes a good u? Well, generally, complicated things in parentheses. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a sixth power. So sorry. Complicated things in parentheses, things that are raised to powers, things in denominators, they all make good u's. So let's try this complicated thing in parentheses as a u. How do we know if it's a good u? Well, we take the derivative... And we ask, is that derivative hiding somewhere? And we say, almost. It's almost hiding there. It would be hiding there if we multiplied by 3. And we can't just do that, so we compensate. 
And what have we got? We've got one-third times the integral of u to the negative 6 du. This is the u to the negative 6. All the squiggly underlined stuff is the du. So how do I do this? Uh, increase the power by 1 and divide by the power. And then we're going to make a substitution back. Uh, so let's see, this is negative 1 15th. Uh, u was this horrible mess to the negative fifth plus a constant. Now you're asking yourself, self, could we do this with definite integrals? And the answer is, you bet. Integral from 0 to 2 of x squared times radical u cubed, yeah, u cubed, x cubed plus 1 dx. Think for a moment. What's the sub? What are we doing? Right. I sure hope that's what you said. I didn't actually hear you say anything. That would be creepy. What's du? Uh-huh. And why is that good news? Because look what we almost have going on there. And since we almost have that going on there, I just have to multiply by 3, right? Compensate. So what have I got? I've got 1 third times the integral of. Well, this thing in parentheses is just u to the 1 half. That's what, that's what this is. That's the square root of u. That's the square root of u. This stuff, squiggly underlined, that stuff is du. Now, here's the kicker. When we do a definite integral, we have to get rid of everything that smells like your x and replace it with something that smells like u. If x is 0, then u is 0 cubed plus 1. And if x is 2, then u is 2 cubed plus 1. Now we have made a complete change of variable. We've gotten rid of everything that looks like x, replaced it with something that looks like u. So how does this go now? Well, I've got one-third. I'm going to find an antiderivative. That antiderivative is two-thirds u to the three-halves. Remember, the power goes up by one, and we divide by that power. I'm going to sub in nine, sub in one, and subtract. So one-third times two-thirds is two-ninths. And then I've got 9 to the 3 halves, that's a square root cubed. 1 to the 3 halves, done. The nice part about doing definite integrals with u substitution is that you don't have to sub back in for x if you make this change a variable here. You don't have to sub back in. You could, in which case you'd go back to 0 to 2 for your x limits, but you don't have to. I'll show one more before we're done. Let's do the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of tan cubed theta secant squared theta d theta. Now I'm thinking to myself, self, is there something in this integrand whose derivative is blatantly in the integrand? Well, yes. That's blatantly in the integrand, and its derivative is also blatantly in the integrand. Its derivative is sitting right there. And so what have I got? I've got an integral of u cubed du. I've got u cubed du. So now what? I can't use 0 to pi over 4 because those are theta limits, and I want u. Well, yes, well, anyway. So if u is, let me try this again. If theta is 0, then u is the tangent of 0. And if theta is pi over 4, then u is the tangent of pi over 4. And then I can do this. I'm going to find an antiderivative of u cubed, uh, which happens to be 1 fourth u to the fourth. And I'm going to sub in 1, sub in 0, and subtract. Oh, I didn't put a blue, blue box.
box around this one. Oh, thank you for your patience. So this is the process of use substitution. And this is the kind of thing that we're going to have to practice many, many times because, well, it's the kind of thing you have to practice many, many times. And so I'll give you a couple to think about. Uh, you might want to know how to do the indefinite integral of 2t radical t squared plus 1 dt. And you might want to know how to do the integral from 0 to 1 of x plus 1 times x squared plus 2x to the fifth power dx. And you might want to know how to do the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine cubed x cosine x dx. Those are some things you might want to know how to do. If you hit the pause button and do them, answers will appear shortly. I wasn't kidding. Answers will appear shortly. This turns out to be 2 thirds times t squared plus 1 to the 3 halves plus a constant. This turns out to be 243 fourths. And this turns out to be 1 fourth. And there you have it. We'll talk more when we get together. Thanks, everybody.